stonker of a show coming up tonight. The Caulfield Cup, the Kosciuszko, the Everest. We are approaching, in my opinion, possibly the best day of racing for the year, and we are pumped to get into it. I'm Sam Wood. Joined, as always, Pat Allendorf, Blake Johnson. Welcome, gents. How good is this weekend coming up? Oh, this weekend coming up, mate, it's better than last weekend, isn't it? It is? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you are, uh, what do they call it when you back the truck up? You just back the truck up and tipped it all out. Uh, rollover event went down last week, courtesy yeah, of Sam Wood. Yeah, three and a half. Second time, uh, we, we've got it up above a thousand dollars twice. Sam Wood has shit the bed on two occasions. No, what, no, we've got it above a thousand dollars three times. I think Pat lost one. No, no I didn't. No, yeah. he didn't. Yep, you he would didn't. You hate money. Well, I walked into your room the other week and you were punching fifty dollars notes. I hate you, money. I hate Pat you. Pat doesn't lose, Pat. I was weird. <laughs> All I do is, mate, Nick a Cave Jack would have destroyed that field. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I'm a massive fan of Zaki, but even my wife said Sam's a bit of a, a pussy. Yeah, Blake, <laughs> yeah, she's right. Who would you have taken in the rollover bit, Blakey? I would have took, I definitely would have took Paul Ailey. I thought he was an absolute moral. Yeah, uh, three and a half grand, I would have taken Animo win. Yeah, how easy is it saying this stuff the Wednesday after... Zaki lost. Easy, eh? You you were like the 60,000 people that messaged me saying, should have had this, should have done this. Who back Zaki? I got no feedback. Oh, mate, I got ve- very, very little feedback except positive energy prior to the race. And then I got kicked in the teeth online after the race, which is fine. And then I thought, I was actually... I was actually very down. I called both of you two peanuts and you said, should have gone Animo the place. I would have backed Paul Lear. I loved I loved Blake's message into the group straight after that said, I thought I was going to say something like, sorry, bro, chin up. And it was, your profit and loss is disgusting. <laughs> uh, it's not very good. It's not very good. It's going to take you a while to get it back. Too, oh, so. I know what I'm getting in for Christmas. You know those split jerseys where you used to like get Bulldogs on one side and Power on the other? Yeah. I'm going to get Zaki colours on one side and North Pacific colours on the other. No, not North Pacific. What was the horse's name? Well, South Pacific. Wasn't South, it? Pacific. South Pacific. <laughs> South Pacific. Sorry. South it's, Pacific. Tough. it's a tough brother. <laughs> oh, it was, it was, it was horror. It what was, was going horror. through your head? Uh, I know. Firstly, firstly, it's on a video that he won't release. Yeah, firstly, I recorded it thinking like, how sick will this be for content? I'll like put the video up with the, like sync it to the race and... Uh, Shirt off? I do have a question. Yeah. When did you know you were in trouble? Random Oh, uh, You know what? Maybe, maybe maybe further back. I, I thought fairly early on we were in strife. When it started throwing its head around. Uh, yeah. Let's go through it. Let's go through the race. Like, for... Well, they walked. Yeah. There's Both a lot race. of blame being thrown around for There's Williams. A lot, of, but a lot of blame. Being I think he did his job. Craig Williams. I think Williams did his job. Uh, All you have to do is keep a dollar thirty favourite out of trouble and he should be winning. I don't know. So. I just, yeah. I, I think the tempo didn't suit. And then who was on the inside? Was it the was it Holmesman? Yep. I don't know. I think I think at about the three hundred mark, it just shifted out a little bit, and it was just Zaki was just completely left um, off the bit. Yeah, and it was flat footed as well when they all just went and huge win by Probabil. Had a lot. Had a lot of messages saying Probabil, you fucked up. You should have taken Probabil. We did get the info from Brett Probabil that he chose Probabil over Behemoth for his uh, Cox Plate aspirations. Oh, well, next it's time... It's too Prob bad Bill, you didn't listen to it. Next time Probabil races Behemoth, we'll go with Probabil. <laughs> but he didn't have the ride on Zaki and choose Probabil. He had like two and a half lengths last start. So I'm not so... I'm, I have no no excuses for him. I'm, I'm his biggest fan and I have no excuses. I, I know the track was a bit firm, pace was a bit slow, but he can reel off a sub-34 second okay, sexual. So you're saying so. that... Though, that, mm. that Non-conformist and uh, probably were just 
better horses and are better horses. No, no, well, he's the best horse in that race. Okay, so no doubt. Why did the best well, can I ask you one race? question? Wait, 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 wait. Why did the best horse in the race lose to those two? Then? <laughs> wasn't a... wasn't tempo? Wasn't the ground? It was a poor wasn't performance. The... It was a, a poor performance. It, you these, Zaki. these good horses are allowed to put in a poor one, but that's not the same Zaki that won the, the Doomed Cup. And if we see the Doomed Cup uh, Zaki on Cox Plate Day, he'll be winning. But it was the same. Can he bounce off that? I saw sure. Sam grabbing its ears after the race, saying, "Are you the same Zaki?" Oh, mate, I was. My wife was. We were at a. My wife was at a baby shower. Just push the kids straight over. <laughs> I was so angry, and for the first time ever, and you will attest to this, Pat. I had very little booze in my house. Usually, I'm stocked to the the, the gills. You were doing a late Saturday Dan Murphy's run. Uh, for me, yes, because I started Very drinking late. at 11. It was such and, a uh, sookie bet, though. Such a sookie oh, bet. For fu- one question, one more question about Meow. that race. <laughs> you, are, <laughs> I, you know what? We, we talk about these bets because it's three and a half thousand dollars. So we talk these out a lot. We went through ratings. Blake had me on some sort of rating software and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, just it's got to be Zaki. I oh, mean, I can't believe how one more, how far would Nicky Jack Cave have won that race by? No, I look back on it now, it would have smashed him. Yeah, 100%. That brings us on to our next part. Pat, you are winner's circle. Pat again, Pat alone as well. Fantastic work. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Patty. Let me go through your wins last week. It was it's tough, tough up here. Oh, mate, at the top again. You went Profondo, which is fantastic. I went Bernard. Uh, Benno. You went Nick and Jack Cave. By the way, we need to talk about Profondo because he is a superstar of the future. Third star. Oh, you know what? what I'm not going to listen to you because I'll hear this stuff now. And next time the rollover bet gets to 2,500, I'll back, I'll, I'll back Profondo and you'll go, what you bet Profondo? <laughs> uh, you took Animo. You took I'm Thunderstruck. What else did you throw in there? September run? No. Nah. What am I thinking? I think that's about it, mate. Yeah, I don't. I think we only did group ones last week, didn't we? And then you went the double. No, we did some extra bets at the Close end. to the double into tips and slips about uh, on Thunderstruck and uh, Animo. We did do. We did do others because I tipped on a. Animo's a live Cox Plate chance. Yeah. He was very good. I'll tell you what. I did I have a very. I thought I was going to have a much bigger all up on um, Animo and on Thunderstruck. On Thunderstruck. But I had Zark in there first. I only reloaded small, and then I went all in on Minaj. Yeah, you got you went all no. in on Minaj, and you got the one and a half multiplier from Tab. The t- did, did that even well, exist? I've never got that before. We've ne- definitely never got that on the. I <laughs> haven't got it on the rollover bit. Uh, oh goodness! So yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was a day. It ended up being a day. <laughs> Yeah. It, it was. It was a day of what a uh, day. Yeah, what a great day. No, but it was a day of favourites outside of Zaki. You could yeah, have every exactly favourite one but, except but Zaki. Exactly. If you were to, if, I think you asked the question on the page, Blake. Like, what? Which is the favourite that's going to let him down? To, like, that's going to let punters down today. I reckon one person said Zaki. And who was that, Blake? It was you two. It's <laughs> us. Definitely was me. I thought I'm, I'm, Animo I'm would a big Zaki fan. I was going to get the Zaki T-shirt before last week, but I still think he's the best horse in Australia. Would well, your money could stop? I had it, I, mate. I could stop COVID the way I'm going at the moment. The way I'm punting at the moment, I only got. I ended up a winning day on Saturday. Personally, obviously not including the three and a half thousand that we lost on Zaki, but because of a Doomben double, when I stayed up late and just donated the entire thing back to York. Where else were we? Hexham. Bit, bit of Tommy Marquand. It was a Mail. five. We 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 had a big bet on a five thousand meter steeplechase race. That was good fun. Yeah, we um, were we were up we were up playing the desperation stakes. Yeah, and then I loaded Sunday. I loaded. I did my butt on Monday on the NFL. I just I need to have a break. And then I was going to have a break, and then I ripped into the um, the Guineas today. <laughs> did you? Your yeah. horse won it. Yeah, mate, absolutely. Of course. And people messaged me, you know, you talked about yearning on the podcast. Surely you backed it. I didn't. 
You were following her since she since she was You're a maiden. So big fan maiden. as a maiden too, were you? Oh, I don't. Yeah, I just live my life one. I think you tipped it to win like the T Rose Stakes or something like that. It was good odds too, and then she got scratched. But then she come out one one one. She won, yeah. She just won. Won a, and then just won a group one. They took her to the provincial meeting and she won. And yeah, then, just, um, just then she's gone to the... Melbourne and she's she's been, she was good. Just she won second in her first um, run in Melbourne. And then she came out and, and won today. But she was, she's good. She's out of a, she's out of a Oaks winning mare as well. So she's on onwards and upwards. Who's that? Oaks. Who's she out of? She's out of, um, won the ATC Oaks. Ah. Kiwi Mayor, James McDonald wrote her. Rising Romance. Do you oh, remember her? She used to go around in the orange Adel- colours. I think she she's placed in the McKinnon Stakes as well. She come from Adelaide? No, she's a Kiwi Mayor. Oh, okay. Kiwi Mayor, but yeah, well, I think, obviously I think I that might have been James, one of James's first group ones in Australia. Blake, if you'd been following that horse, there's no way you couldn't back it today. No way. She got out to ridiculous odds. Yeah. I, did, I actually did back a... 50 to one shot in the race, but it was just the wrong one. That's not good. Did you back uh, Hinged? Were you on Hinged in that race? Yeah, I backed Hinged as well. Oh, hinged shit, you were unhinged. Like, there was, there was, hinged there was, got like, hammered. There was a few unlucky runs in that race. Hinged you know what, got hammered. You know what Caulfield needs before the cup? At one more meeting at Caulfield. Yeah, when it's pissing down rain. We do. We got a big meeting on Saturday. This is your area. I, I'm excited to hear your thoughts on Saturday, Sam Wood. Why? You know about Caulfield. Oh, fuck Caulfield. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Pat, I think you called it the, the graveyard last week. It is Caulfield. It's the only track I haven't been to down there too. And it's, uh, it's not one that I'm rushing to get to, but I definitely want to get down to a, uh, a Caulfield Cup or one of those types or one of those group one races that they have there because uh, I want to see what the go is there. Why do I've they actually keep... been to a Thousand Guineas meeting. Have you? Once. Yeah, On my Wednesday? old man had a runner in the race. Stella, Stella I'm Cadonto. I'm not sure if you remember. Um, no. Stella Marie. Do you remember Picoline? Do you remember Picoline? Her? Yeah, I do remember that horse. Yeah, Picoline. As a, she, as a trainer. Mm, yeah, as a yeah, trainer. Right. Yeah. She's a gun uh, trainer. She was probably the best horse he ever had, but she runs second in a group one. She runs second in, in the flight stakes to uh, a horse called Unworldly, uh, one of um, Ingham's horses early days, and she won about six on the trot. But she, she, and then she broke down on the track. So, like, I think was it was wasn't it Huey Bayman's first? Yeah, it was uh, Hugh's first group one ride. Yeah, I've heard this story the... before at family gatherings. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, a young guy named Huey, huge <laughs> Bowman. Yeah, my old man gave he was his, nothing his until I like, ripped him out of the race, <laughs> and put him on board a group. Ride. He was a, he was a when, weed. Actually, yeah, when, when Huey, like, Mentions the best horses he's ever rode. He, he usually mentions Winks and then Pickling. <laughs> I know who else he mentioned. Lion Tamer. Lion Tamer. Back dead. from the dead. Oh, sorry. I just meant back from the dead, seeing as it's made three episodes in a row of a mention, which is fantastic for a horse that what a did horse. a lot. Every week I mention Lion Tamer on the show, would it gives me a thousand dollars? I don't know why. Well, I go, yeah. He's giving me four thousand. Throw already. money away. I think I just walked off. By the way, for anyone that's not watching the video. See you, um, yeah. So, pay you take winner's circle on the same. Look, BJ actually did tip a lot of those horses and tips and winners as well. But the truth is, he's absolutely been. Um, he's absolutely been getting into me about the Zaki bet. So anyway, he's back. Um, all right. So let's go. Who are we legging up this weekend? Me, I'll go first. Do you want me to go first? Or who, who are you legging up? Well, it's not Craig Williams. Oh. Willow did nothing wrong. Oh. Willow did nothing. He's riding, Willow he's did riding nothing. Enemo in the, um, the Cox Plate. So will, will you be Fuck. having your money on James Cummings and Craig Williams double? I. Uh, that is that literally your, your worst your nightmare. Topic. Oh, mate. Jay Cum and the, and the, <laughs> and the Willow. Willow. Uh, no, I, I agree. It wasn't the worst ride on Zaki, but it wasn't a great ride. He, he was riding it like it was a dollar. Yeah, what are you talking about? It wasn't even his worst ride of the day. Yeah, that was Brooklyn <laughs> Hustle. <laughs> Jeez, he would have copped some abuse on the way. He was probably on tilt by Brooklyn Hustle time. Oh, you could see, mate, the frustration when he was in that pocket and he just 
dropped hands and went, oh, fuck this. Yeah. I'm here. I'm stuck. I'm not riding. I've had enough. Uh, all right. Well, Craig Williams is not my leg up. Who's your leg up? No, I don't have one. I'm just saying who I wouldn't. Oh, okay. Sweet. I've almost well, got a leg down. <laughs> my one is James McSleepy. Sleepy Sleep rode the first three winners at Warwick Farm today. Is that what? Yeah, no, nah, he, uh, he rode Paul Lele at the win. And he also... Paul Lele. And I was also a brilliant ride on Minhaj. Not even talking through my pocket. Oh, for... Went back to the inside. Oh, wow. Got the running. Could you believe it? 1.5 TAB. Thank you. <laughs> ve- thank you. <laughs> thank you who'd very have, much, TAB. Glenn Munsey, legend. Who'd have thought, who'd have thought your, uh, your leg up of the week would be the on the horse? You've got a one and a half. Jay He's Mac- going to ride Zaki <sighs> in the Cox Plate, apparently. Is he? He's, he's after an I'm exemption. Back on. I'm back on. <laughs> I'm back on. I love Zaki. How do I? You, I, I, mate, I love this if you're, horse. How if do you're going to back, if you're going to back Zaki again, you should have to apply for an exemption to go down there. Well, no, you because you it should be something like you know how you declare a gear change. People should know if you're having oh, your money on Zaki on again. Like it'll be in the little yeah. stuff down the bottom. Sam Wood on. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, Wood, Sam Wood brackets on. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Woodhoff. Um, Ooh, it's like bar plates. <laughs> yeah, synthetic wood filler. <laughs> Sam Wood off is your launch. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. That's why off on. Um, yeah, I just Blake, I'll, use your I'll, use your leg up today, but just ignore him. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Jenny Duggan. You know, well, man. Oh, J Doug, pretty famous, pretty famous uh, manager going he, on there. J Doug. It's uh, it's all changed for her since she got the good manager. Yeah, well, he's uh, he's picked the right time for her to come to town. She's had four rides in the metropolitan area, and she's rode three winners. So, oh, yeah. uh, she's absolutely flying. They've been a good prices too. Uh, she bloody you know, knocked us over in members only, though. So, uh, Hildo could have uh, helped us out with that. But so yeah, yeah Hildo Milkman. is her manager. If you don't know that, Hildo, who does our Friday show, Luke, yeah, Hilton. The Luke Hilton, the great Luke Hilton, the great. Late Luke. Hilton. <laughs> no, he's alive. <laughs> Someone, he's alive. Everyone keeps saying the late great Luke Hilton. What is our Friday show called again? It's called the Bagman. Oh, uh, we'll come up with a better name than that. We've already argued about this off off air, but I, I like the name. Oh, the Coke Sam Boys. Like the, name, but... <laughs> the Coke Boys. The drug sniffers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys get your Jenny Duggan. Out. I like it. Jenny Duggan. Two guys in a line. <laughs> <laughs> Crossing the line. Uh, Jenny Duggan. Yeah, very good. Who did you have, Pat? Oh, James McSleepy. James McSleepy. J-Mac and Jim Duggan. I love him. Minhaj just cut back to the inside. It's like I he knew Jamie. I was on 1.5 times. I, you know what? Someone has actually... Someone sent him uh, the Zaki bet slip that we had and literally minutes later, he declared that he was going down there so there's a good chance he's doing the full quarantine everything for me. Did he message you and Actually, say, have it on, go again? He, he go said, again, he goes, go again. What about how I was copying some emojis from jockeys? Yeah, Ben Allen got on there, didn't there's he? A few, there's a few jockeys doing vomit emojis and sweating emojis and things like that for yeah, my Zaki they, bet. they wouldn't have had the bet either. A couple challenging that. for the ride too, probably. Yeah, they're happy to get it. That was, oh, James Mac coming down. I thought we, anyone could get it. Did anyone oh. send like a cat emoji or anything like that? Your no. pussy? As if you, oh, <laughs> come on. You know what? Oh, Kayla you Johnston. The same. Oh, in my inbox. She <laughs> just slid into my inbox. You pig, you are a pussy. Oh. Can, you tell, can you tell your wife to stop sending me straight up abuse messages? But I'd, mm. I'd like to see how you guys go with that. You know what? Put it this way. You guys have never had a bet with the highest amount of money that we've had. So I'd like to see how you go with balls online. Yeah. You're the only <laughs> one to lose over a thousand. <laughs> we never get around to it because it always comes back. We've got to, to change us. order. It's got to go Blake, me, Blake, me, Blake, me, Blake, <laughs> and then me. No, Woodhead can with, have no, it under a thousand. So oh, I'll take until the pair, pressure man. goes up, like Woodhead just crumbles under pressure. What do you mean? I, I backed the best horse in Australia. Or the top, you just top look two at, horse in Australia. You just had to look at race shape and you would have worked yeah. out. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I, the race shape is the hot 
term at the moment. Piss Didn't off you look, look at the race shape? You didn't look at the race I shape. Looked at, uh, That's Joe lazy. The race shape with six, five <laughs> runners in it. He just, he went short as oh. price horse, short as price horse. Let me see what I've tipped today. Shortest price horse in Australia. Uh, you guys by go. Shortest price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, odds. Shortest price. In Australia. Uh, hey, Blake, what's that form that you do sometimes where you just organise it? Shortest price. Just shortest price. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the tab have that, but they should get it. Organised uh, by shortest price. Yeah, for the then day. Then you multi the top five up. For the day. Yes, that's the printing <laughs> strategy. Uh, cool, guys. Appreciate all your support. Shall we, Grateful. Uh, Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? We got the yeah. for Did we mention you? that we wouldn't have had Zaki as our rollover bet last week? No, no, we haven't mentioned. Do you want to go through <laughs> it? All right. All right. Let's get into this weekend's race. Let's do it. Let's do I'm it. not punting. Just kidding. Uh Oh no, I've had to I have to do this all again because this has been the best day, like probably the hardest day of going through form of this whole group one season, I reckon. What a what a fantastic day of races we've got on Saturday. It's my wedding anniversary. The Everest. Oh, happy it is so wedding anniversary. Thank you, mate. We uh we actually got married on the first Everest, Everest Caulfield Cup Day and uh Red Zell. Red Zell. I tipped Rizel. I tipped Redzel to my father-in-law as he was, uh, you know, like how he walks. He walked at least down the aisle and kissed and, and he he shook my hand. He said, you look after us. I said, well, you go back there and back Redzel because it is going to shit him. <laughs> I'll look after right. it. You, you look after this right. bit. All right. I had a winning day all around that, that day. Uh, some say one of the greatest weddings of all time. Some I say. Well, it definitely was. It wasn't a good wedding. It finished um, with the horses, didn't it? Did it finish with the horses? It did. I mean, whatever was on my was shoulders it? for a bit of that wedding. I punched a hole on the roof of the venue singing Mr. Brightside. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Brightside. Um, but yeah, yes, it's, on my shoulders. It's, it's a yeah, it's, <laughs> it was, it's a big, it's a big, big day. It is one of my favorite days. Literally, just before we came onto the podcast, Elise and I were sitting there discussing the uh the seafood smorgasbord we're gonna intake on saturday champagne uh and it kicks plenty, off well not kicks oysters off, but oh yeah mate <laughs> you try and keep my wife away from oysters you know what i mean <laughs> uh, so horny. yeah well no that's what i mean she likes a bit of oysters and seafood extender uh let's go to oh, one of the early, not the earliest race but the earliest race we're going to do today which is the kosciuszko so First thing I love this concept. How old is the Kosciuszko race? Does anyone know? I gotta say three. Two or three, years. yeah. It's, it's three, one year less old. than the Everest, isn't it? Not sure. Jeez, you know who I love? Peter Volandis. He's always coming up he's with making all these new races. races. He's the best. Getting the dolphins into the NRL, another Queensland team about time. Um, how much must that man work? Do you think? Do you think he does anything else other than work? What no. does he do? Because he does racing in NRL. So he's, he's yeah. He Mate, would have pretty, to be one of the most... Pretty decent fucking job, though. Hey, uh, just going to go work on the NRL today. He'd be on a million and a half between the two. I don't, oh, I don't easy, think he'd care easy. about money. 2018 was the uh, first year, I guess. Any bell something, won it? Finish that. Play cool. No idea. Bell Flyer. Oh, Bell Flyer, yeah. I was Adam Hieronymus. 2019. 2019. Finish this sentence. You can't think. <laughs> no. I handle the truth. Yes. And the best punter on this show won it last year. Handle what the truth it? it. It's me. Oh. It's me. <laughs> oh, well done. Uh, the prize money is huge for the Kosciuszko. It's 1.27. For 1,200 metres, wow. three-year-old and up, set weights and penalties. So they have to come. They're, 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 it's basically just a – there's no other requisites other than it's a country trainer or it can be a provincial trainer. Country trained. Country trained. That's it, though. He can win in the city. He can do all sorts, but it has to be a country trained horse. Country trained horse. I think that's it. Top line of betting at the moment, handled the truth. 
Yeah, Still country here. train. That's it. Edit. I think the country championships has a couple of like uh, you can't have won, like, won so many races, but this yeah, is just yeah, yeah. open country, country, country races. races. Yeah, yeah they okay. can do anything because Handle the Truth was running around against bloody Nature Strip last start. So oh, it's got it's got it has. Let me have a look. It has about seven hundred thousand dollars prize money on the next best horse. And he's a good horse. He's, handle the truth, absolutely. Handle the um, so handle the truth at five dollars. Edit at five dollars. Art Cadeau at seven fifty. Front page eight fifty. Spiranak nine dollars. The rest are double figure odds. Uh, who wants to kick us off with the Cosy Oscar? I'll send this. Out. I'll pass it over to Blake because I'm going to give it to be wide. So am you're I. going wide here, are you? A little bit wide. Yeah. Well, I, to tell you the truth, I haven't finished doing the form for the race. Can we talk oh, it through that? it? Because I've got yeah, I've let's got talk a, through it. Though. I've got questions to ask. There's three horses I like in this race, and Pat, have you done the whole thing? Yeah, yes. you, talk to me. Most talk to me, Woodhead. What do you got? Well, firstly, talk to us, Woodhead. Speaking about James McSleepy, I like Spiranak. <laughs> it's a horse we've spoken about on this show before. Uh, it's got good winning record. Uh, I think it has won. Is it one in the city? I'm not sure if it has or not, but it's 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 a very, very good chance at $9. Um, it seems to get to a point where, I don't know, like if, I don't see him as a much better horse, or sorry, a, a much worse horse than the top two. What do you guys think of Spirina? Personally, I think she's very good. She's on her way up. Uh that was a terrific win in the Panorama, and that was a really strong race uh, at Bathurst. At the Bathurst, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think. Uh, well, that I Watson, you guys spoke about be. it. Beat Watson that day by about four lengths, four three, lengths, three and a half lengths. And yeah, you guys somewhere. spoke about Watson on the way in on Monday um, as one of the horses to follow, which is good. Yeah, she didn't have much luck in the uh, in the highway on Saturday, but big chance. Spirit Act. Well, this is an even field. This, uh, like, I'm not going to put many pots on any horses in this race. Uh, she, re- they, they ran her in the country championships last year. I think she's probably a better horse this time in. Uh, so she's, she's just, she's just come back a little bit more seasoned, and and, and that was a good win at, in the Panorama. How do you line up the handle the truth form behind running sort of four to six lengths behind the group top group one horses? And then this horse in a group three running seven lengths behind. Well, he's really well placed, handle the truth. Uh, he's got a 106 benchmark rating. So uh, the, the second highest rated horse in the race is front page, and he's got a 96 benchmark rating. So under the set weights and penalties conditions of the race, they both come in with 59 kilos. So in a handicap, uh, he should be giving front page... Uh, something like five kilos. So he's really well weighted. So I think he's the one to beat, obviously, and he's drawn perfectly and he, he gets Nash, who's in good form and knows him well. So who's that? Handle hard the truth? to beat, handle the truth. Yes, very hard to beat. Yeah, I think it's rating those from, it's from past sins. It's from its past results. I don't know. Yeah, but it... could, could any of the, could any of these horses got that, got within five lengths of Nature Strip or Eduardo? I was within five lengths of Nature Strip and all Eduardo on the line, spectating the race. Yeah, it's got I mean, to go around. It's got to run somewhere. Like the race before, it got beaten by Marway and Wagga. Yeah, yeah. Marway's a Marway's a jet on his day, and he yeah, yeah that's, that, that's as kilos. good as Nature Strip. Is that one of Marky Newman's horses? Yes. Yeah, it ten is. lengths <laughs> off the <laughs> dash. I, I know three what lengths of rock. I know what they like. say about that Marway horse. It's uh. C of a horse, I think. Oh, is it just a just not fun to be around? Yeah. Not Tom fun. Cherry seems to have the key to that horse. He, he's got a good record. Well, that'll be did good in win... three months' time. Yeah, that'd be good when he's back. And he also did he win Apprentice of the Year? Tommy Sherry. Yeah, he did. Sure. Yeah, yeah, Green Award. The Theo Green Award. And your old man would have won a couple of them, Blackie. Uh, my old man was apprentice to Theo Green. Yeah. That's the award. awards. I'm giving the award out, Mel. Did your dad win a Theo yeah. Green, Pat? Or you no, he was, about, you he was talk, a beat whore. And... You don't talk about your dad on this show. No, he doesn't. He doesn't dad once won a Caulfield Cup. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll, did he never we'll, rode him one. <laughs> we'll, find, we'll find out weeks later. Oh, I should have done dad. The old man went, no, no, I've got a better one today. I've got a good one today. 
Oh, what okay, other questions do you yeah, have? Keep going, Woody. Woody. Okay, so worth having a bet on Spirinac. Now, this two, these two purely cut. So there's a lot of talk about Sunrise Ruby. Now, Mitchell Beer, who is a great trainer, um, is very good on his socials. A lot of people like him. This thing beat Phillipsburg at Randwick uh, three months back. Come out, ran behind Calgary Queen on a heavy eight. Uh, who wrote it? Rachel King wrote it. Glenn Boss in the saddle. $17 seems a little bit overs for Sunrise Ruby. Back or lay? I'll lean in here, mate. This is my on top of here. Ooh, Sunrise here Ruby. That's is. good. That's music to my ears because I'm on her 50s. Are you really? I am. Wow, we. I, I think this horse got a lot of upside to it. Drops in weight for this race. Gets around with 53. I think it's the last few starts it's gone around with huge weights on its back. Uh, 57. Sorry, not 57 last start. 58 and a half. She ticks the heavy track half. box. 58 yeah. and a half. But even the, what was it, three starts ago when they had 61 and a half and just in that benchmark 58 and just went, flew past. I'm already going to put a 1B10 that day. So I think this thing uh, firms too. A lot of talk about it. Uh, we're it's going to getting... get to a good spot from the barrier. Yeah. It probably looks like it needs the best run to win, though. I think there are a few more in the race with a bit more class. But as far as upside go, down in the weights, this thing looks... It's looks a set. Good, good upside. And I do... I don't know how many good horses Richard Bensley's ridden, but he's been around for a long time. But he reckons that she is the best horse he's ever ridden. I don't know. What horse, what horse has he ridden? Oh, Dick Benz. He's, a, he's an old fellow, Richard Bensley, so... Is he? Yeah, it's been around I, for a while. I'm happy to have the bet on Sunrise Ruby. I didn't pull the trigger today because I, you know, drained my funds. But I was, I think it's a good one. The other one that I want to ask you guys about. Now, I got, there's a guy that. Likes uh, a wet track too, sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. One on heavy. Well, no, it came second on heavy last start. No, it's, uh, it's, she's got a good heavy track record. She she's won she won twice early days, Aubrey. Yeah, what's that? What is that? Four. Four outings on a heavy for three wins in a second. It's pretty I'll impressive. Tell you who's, I'll tell you, this horse, uh, Edit, the Cody Morgan horse, he's a jet. Well, he's actually, a, the next he's horse... He's a really wanna, good horse. The next horse I want to ask you about is a Cody Morgan horse. Yeah, is it Ice in Vancouver? It is. What do you yeah, guys think? A, so it, it, came, it came to me... I, 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 there's a guy that tips in tips and slips. He um, runs his own subscription uh, for the dogs... He's an astute punter. He knows fucking so much about the injuries. His name is Ricky James. If you want to look him up and give him a follow and et cetera, et cetera. But he he pointed this thing out to me probably oh, probably 18 months ago. And they reckoned that it's it was the best horse that Cody had in the stable. Talk to me, Blackie. What's the why would they go blinkers off first time here? Can't really tell you that. Surely they're just not getting the results they yet, but... thought that they would get from it. It's only had six. Like like I said, that was a horse that it had, had one run, or maybe it was its it was just about to have its maiden run eighteen months ago. It's only had six runs since. If they're very specific races. No, well, he got a spot in this race last, last year. Last year, came two, last two runs. But he, I think he pulled up with like a cardiac arrhythmia there or something like that last yeah, year. Yeah, it did. Was, it did. I but, backed yeah, it. that's what you would have pulled up with if you backed it too. Yeah, it same. Just wasn't, it just wasn't that's enough. That's um, right. But I think sixty-five lengths. Why even write it? Just write the infinity sign. As far as I know, he doesn't travel very well. This horse, um, which is yeah, okay. That's light. Problematic. Um, no, apparently. Uh, this is just what I've heard on the grapevine that uh, away from like country tracks where he doesn't have to travel too far, he's he sweats up really badly and he like gets he runs his race before the race. So uh, right, okay. they probably That's like bad. I'm not sure. Maybe they they took the blinkers off because they wanted to settle a little bit. I know he hasn't ticked the 1200 meter box yet, so that might be the case. But I, I haven't. To tell you the truth, I haven't looked into all these horses yet, so that's why I'm not keen to um to tip one yet. Uh, you, you mentioned oh, we, we're gonna I'm gonna put a handle because we're gonna put this on the social, so I'm gonna I put will a handle say to edit on top. Edit a jet. 
Oh. Well, can I can I go back to edit? So yeah, it's go only back had, to edit. It's only had the one start here in Australia. Uh, it's came out at won the Spring Cup at Tamworth, where it beat oh, Cassie's sister by half a length. Like, why are we seeing five dollars about this horse? Far out. Go and have a look at the replay of where he came that, from to win right, that race. Okay, right. He he reeled off. I think he reeled off a sub 33 sectional to win that race. Um, and there's, there's always been a little bit of whisper about how good this horse is. So he, he drifted in the market that day. I think they went up really short odds, like $2.80 or something. He you know, got out to $6. Three, and that was a strong, yeah, got out of six bucks. that was a really strong, like there was a few horses that were searching for a Kosciuszko run in that. And, I know you you put shit on Cassie's sister just there, but she was on the verge of getting a Kosciuszko run and she sprinted away and Tamworth is a, a tight turning track and this horse just picked her up. It was, just, it was an outstanding win. And it, it had trialled three times into this, so they were obviously expecting a big run. Otherwise, they would have trialled a fourth time. I know. I, I personally, we members only backed a horse called My Benalla in that race. Um, and we took decent odds. I think we took three fifty, and he started two forty five. So the money came for him. But we also took horse that as went a, the other way. Uh, we backed we him in the Cosmos. Yeah, we we was, did, but he didn't get a run. So we get, our get money run. Back, we got so our money fine. back because I actually had. I don't know if I've got my money back yet, but I got it today. Oh, that's good because I had the, I had a I had a double with my Benella and uh, what's the thing we we like in the four pints. Oh, uh, yeah. When? Uh, a while ago. The Kiss some. That's it. That was a good bet. He's uh, he's into $12 or something like that. Mm. Hopefully he wins that. That'd be nice. Dear Overs Gods, please reflect nicely on us. Oh, they haven't been kind lately, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they, we'll they snag look after us. The um, Overs Gods are the worst gods. Uh, I'm going to... So, Pat, you're going to have Sunrise Ruby on top. This is just so I can put across socials. BJ, I'm going to put a handle the I'll truth take, on top I'll of you. I'll take right? edit. I'll take. You want edit. to take edit? Okay. Yeah. Oof, that was a re-edit. Wow, we. Uh, no edits. I'm going to go with Spirinac then. Yeah, that's fair enough too. And we spoke about it because Paige Spirinac. If you haven't looked her up on, oh, maybe yeah. you maybe you looked her up on Instagram while we were recording this. You're like, wow, wow. I found out what I'm doing later. <laughs> I'm just working on my swing. Um, <laughs> All right, so Sunrise Ruby, which I, I, I'm going to have a bet on that as well. In fact, I'm probably going to bet back or play all the exotics here, like these three horses. I'm going to lay handle the truth, and I'm going to throw, I have to throw Ice in Vancouver in there just so it doesn't make a dick of me. Um, yeah. And Blakey, to say that, um, you know, how far behind handle the truth, I mean, Nature's Trip, it handle the truth run, it's like, I had a horse that once beat Red Zell in a trial. Yeah, we, we did have a... What horse was that? Oh, the Desired. <laughs> and that, that's going for the four points as well, isn't it? Jeez, he's four flying points. that horse. He's the four lucky, very well. lucky me and... Is it the four pillars? The four points is beer. Um, we get out of it, mate. Uh, we not know, we get out of them when they go. four pillars is gin, isn't it? It is. You know, did we go there for your... Like the night before your wedding? Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> we had a rip that night. Where did we end up? Like, where did we end up? No, that was in, um, we went to Rosebrick. <laughs> but yeah, it was a gin bar. We might have been drinking four pillars. We were yeah, that was like in Zetland or somewhere. 5 a.m. in the morning, Blake. Where were we? <laughs> Goodness me. We were that in was... Rosebrick. Uh, I, I don't know where we ended up. Um, do you remember we, do you remember we said that that we was a... the end of the pandemic? Was it? <laughs> I think we said a lot of things that night. We're the best punters in the world. It's Speaking not you, of you and you broke Luke Hilton's nose that night, didn't you? Oh yeah, I fell into we it. We were in. No, you did. I pushed him out. <laughs> you were. I don't even know. Oh, this is just. No, I pushed Marlo. We, were, we I put, were like in a. We were like in a, a, like a freight elevator going to a club or something like that. And yeah, it was weird. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Yeah, he yeah. broke his nose. I broke his nose. I, I pushed Marlo and he went in there. It was just I, a I went out the back door pretty Yeah, he'll, yeah he threw smoke long bombs before very, this. very early. Uh, okay, let, let's get into this Everest. It is a huge race. 
Uh, oh, mate, this is one that we should go through. We'll go through the whole thing. We've got plenty of time. We've got this and one more race, and then we're just going to breeze through a few at the end where you guys literally just give me a tip and that's it. Oh, I've got a quick one. Yeah. I've got a quick one and a good one. Okay. Oh. Royal Randwick, race seven, the Everest, 1,200 metres. Wait for age. Let me just talk about the uh, prize money here. 14.85 million dollars 6.2 to the winner 2.3 to second 1.4 to third our current favorite as we sit here living and breathing is nature strip at four dollars 40 classique legend 480 <laughs> Eduardo six dollars, Gitra eight fifty, Mask Crusader nine fifty. We've got Home Affairs at eleven dollars. We're rolling into the double figure odds here. The Inferno, the Unknown, twenty six bucks. Lost and Running also at twenty six. Libertini thirty fours. Trekking Wild Ruler Embracer. Uh, our current emergencies are Kementari, Senor Fox, Standout, and Chat. Boys, sorry. Listeners, crack a fresh one. Can I say one thing before we kick off? Have a listen as we go through that race. When the the 16 horses in this race, 12 horses and four emergencies were standing around and they see chat, it obviously was getting bullied. (laughs) Leave chat chat alone. Chat, what are you doing here? Are you the clerk right. of the course? Are you the clerk of the course? <laughs> no, he's emergency, Please so he doesn't get to go around anymore. I know, but like that that's You're like say that'd be like including me as the shadow player for Queensland next year. It is a, it is a bit rough. Chat. Chat alone. So well, how you... does the how does the how does the um shit chat? How does <laughs> how does the uh what do you call it? How does the Emergencies work. Are they emergencies that fall well, into if, other people's slots? Yeah, or? if one of the yeah. if one of the horses scratch or is like has an injury, temperature, if there's something goes on overnight, and, um, they need someone to fill the spot. Otherwise, the person that bought the slot yeah. does. Do they get a down. choice, or does it go just go first reserve? Yeah, like Gee, that's, what, that's think, what I want to know. Like, you would so, think for the money they've paid, they get a choice, but they. I think I have a feeling they get a choice. But you would ta- think you'd take Kim and Tari out of those. Yeah, you have to. Well, I'd take Standout. Yeah, well, would you? Really... I'd take Kim and Tari. I think I'd Standout has it has good form around Mask Crusader. Like, I think Standout's a nice horse. Yeah, you might be right, but he's a, he's a, he's a dry tracker. So, like, yeah. so like, <laughs> Kim and Tari. Imagine Gormor. Special K. Oh, we'll take. Can't chat. F. We'll take chat. Can't F. Can win. Then stop, you've got to stop banging Kementari. Fucking make us look like idiots. Beat Zutori last start. What a killer. Um, let's roll down him, mate. So do you want to start? Where, where do we want to start? Do you want to start? Let's go in order of odds. So what well, why don't I I'll kick it off. I'll go number one, you go number two, Blake go number three. Okay. What we think of him. Oh, we, they, you lead off and then everyone goes after that. How about I ask you two? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've, had, I've had a busy week, I have to be honest. <laughs> okay, who's taking Nature Strip? Me. I'm taking uh, it on top. Nature Strip is your on top selection. Yeah, I think from Barrier 10 is its perfect draw. If it draws inside, it's forced to hunt up. It's forced to go as hard as whatever anything on the outside goes. At least from the outside, J-Mac will be able to jump it out and say... If they're going to light it up like last year, just go. And he'll sit off and hopefully do a TJ Smith sort of thing. I know I know some people say it's a more of a, it's a it's an early in the year horse. It's a, a spring horse. But I think it's form at Ramwick and what it's done to horses at Ramwick, if it can do that again over this 1,200 metres and not over race and not be forced to go lickety split, it could really do a number on this field. It's a... Uh... The informed punter of the show has just come straight off the bat and taking nature strip. It's yeah. I think there's personally, I think there's nothing at all between uh, the top three. I, I don't think there's I could I, I'd 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 be hard pressed 
splitting these horses. Nature Strip, Classique Legend, Ed- Eduardo. Uh, Classique Legend's first up off 370, 307 days. That's got to be tough. Um, he's in the right stable to do it. Lesbridge is he's got him flying at the trials, but whether or not he can produce what he did last year to win this race. Can I ask you about Hong Kong? Why did he get sent back from Hong Kong? Um, why, did, why did he come back from Hong Kong? I'm not sure. Maybe just the, the conditions are a lot um, different over there. It's a lot more humid. humid. Maybe he just didn't settle in very well over there. So Was it reported the problem it had over there or it wasn't reported? I'm not sure. Uh, I couldn't tell you. But um, Bon Ho... He he lives over there, so he wanted him to to go over there. Um, but like if he if if the whole, if you've got a an Everest winner over there who who hasn't thrived in his first three months, and you've got a fifteen million dollar race in Australia, um, if he's not going to produce his best in Hong Kong, I'd I'd know where I'd want him to be. Well, that's right. But after the horse had a minor bleeding attack, is it a case of? It's come back to Australia, obviously, for the better conditions. Maybe but- I, I can't. I can't say this, but I can't. I don't know if this is correct. But in Australia, you get two chances at bleeding. So you do three months. Maybe in life. Hong Kong, maybe you only get one chance. Not exactly sure. You know, I don't think so. I think I think it's similar to Australia. I just think they didn't want to risk it over there. Might but, be right. Yeah. I do know if it bleeds again, they could just send it to Macau. Oh, I, I think I know. <laughs> Bleed all day. I, I, th- I actually think I know. Um, I think in Australia you can treat bleeders, and in Hong Kong you oh, can't. That's true. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So maybe uh, this is what I think that in Australia you you can't you can't you can treat bleeders. But in Hong Kong, that would be a positive swab. Yeah, I, I feel like I know this. I think you're uh, spot okay. on here. That's but, why they send him a can. That, I could why be wrong, but I do know. have a feeling that that's right. As I said, that's I correct. <laughs> um, I'm happy to have you yeah, back. There's a superstar. They got similar I'm, bleeding. I'm, but is the is it a case of he hasn't given it a gut busting run before the Everest? Because it's in fear of that uh, that it could bleed again. You think this this horse might have limited runs know. left in it? I don't know. It, it it's a great horse. Don't get me wrong. And I would love to be I, sick not being able to tip it on top. But I could not tip it on top first up off the back of trials into the fourteen million dollar Everest. The only way it's probably getting away with going into the Everest first up is the fact that it won it last year. I know Libertine is going in first up as well, but it. It has had documented problems as well. Another one, Libertini, who went into, I think, last year's Everest or the year before as, as a favourite or one of the favourites. What? So, Why the price? Like, you, you're spot on. It, it's run once in the last 12 months, which was at Sha Tin. Uh, I, I, because I, if he produces what he did in the last Everest, he's an odds-on pop. Yeah, and the year but before... That's so it, hard to say. Like, but it's, even the 2019 Everest... It only got beat because it was. It had a, a horror run. He never got a crack at it. Absolute yeah. horror run. Yeah, but so, there was form in between. It sat there and won what two races, uh, two lengths off Libertini in the Premier Stakes. Um, first up, yeah, but, two weeks out. Like there's something to work off. I feel like we've got nothing to work off except last year's Everest, and we're like I I love Classic Legend because I like backing horses that have. Given me right. good memories, and that that weekend last week, last year, Everest weekend last year, if you remember, Pat, we had Classic Legend, and we had Very Elegant, we had big bets on them. It was one of the best. We had a day. It was one of the best days of punting you and I have ever had as a combined uh, syndicate. But and I'd love to back Classic Legend, but I just don't understand how it can be second favorite or or or. or I don't know. He has to be. He has to be. He has to be there because if 100%. If, what, if why is it? Why is, why is he better his, price than Eduardo then? If he Eduardo's produces his best, he, he wins easy. If the, if the three horses, if <clears throat> if Classic Legend, Eduardo, and Nature Strip all produce their best, Classic Legend will win the race. If you're going off, if you're going off one race to say that's the best form going into this race, what is it? 
Me. Anyone. <laughs> There's only two of you. I'm not sure. The, well, the shorts. The shorts or the Nature TJ? Strip and Ed, Eduardo and Matt. Um, well, the TJ's, the TJ's from the autumn. So oh, I understand that. Sorry, lads, I froze there. Um, you've been freezing heaps. I just wasn't sure if you were just having a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it, but oh, yeah, I, I'm struggling to see how it's a better price than Eduardo. And right last now. year he was he was back as if unbeatable. I think that probably the uh, the safest bet in the race is Eduardo because he loves it wet. He loves um, he's flying. He was back to a, he returned in outstanding order. He's going to produce a a really good effort. Um, like I, I think he's obviously he wasn't at his best in that TJ Smith last year. Um, and he, he wasn't even at his best in, in that doom in 10,000. But if he, if he produces what he did in the Galaxy, he's going to go very close. Already a fair bit of money's come for Eduardo. It's true, but if they light him up... But he doesn't have to lead these days, Eduardo. He I can take did, a sit. But if he does... I know on the Stratty, but is it an 1,100-metre horse like in this class? Oh, I think he's I think he's a 1,200-metre horse. I, I have no problem with 1,200 yeah, for him. I agree. We're talking about Eduardo, aren't we? Yeah. Eduardo, yeah. Uh, it's so definitely that, that's, off. that's where I got the question mark on it. Like, we, Mars Crusaders beaten Eduardo by sort of two or three lengths. Nature Strips beaten it over 1,200 metres by a few lengths. Like, that's where I've got the question mark over Eduardo in the Everest is that pressure is going to be pouring on up front. Does it have that extra 100 metres of um, can it cop it? It couldn't last year. Faded run last. All right, below these top three, are we are we looking at anything else? Gitra, Trekking, Mars Crusade. Mars Crusade has been very, very got impressive. One. I've got one. Oh, here he is. I think there could be a three-year-old in this race that uh, that might be the standout of the three-year-olds. Oh, there's been no um, no three-year-old stood up this season. Home Affairs has come back in great order. Had that great win over Paul Lele. And uh, I think the only detriment probably is that it's going to have to sustain some hard pressure up front. But, yeah, it could be the one out of the box, low low down in the weights and uh, a lot of potential. Len Boss on board. Yeah, I'm uh, on him at good odds. I'm on him at 50s to win this race. But I actually well, don't really think that he can win. Um, I just I, I think Paul Laley would have a better chance of winning this race than him just because... Yeah, he, he's going to be on speed. Um, he's going to have to absorb pressure. And I'm not exactly sure if he can take a sit and sprint off it. But I did love the real, way, though, that it kept, it held its position in front last start and nothing was coming close to it on the line. It was either holding its position or moving away from them. And I just thought that was real tough from a first up run. It was very good. Um, but this is going to, this is a, this is a different ball game. That's right. That's right. But but great grounding. It's gone three trials into that first up win and then Everest. I think that's the part where you go, shit, this horse could be, you know, it's almost its fifth run in the prep and you go, this could be its peak run. I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think he can highball and beat them, but if he no. can, if he can take a sit and sprint, um, then yes, he can well, win the race. Just how interesting is that start where Home Affairs, Eduardo, Nature Strip, Lost and Running are probably all going to just go jump out of the barriers and look at each other and go, who's going to try and F this up? Embracer. Yeah. Well, look, look, oh, and Embracer uh, as well, sorry. Embrace is probably the one that's really going to F this up for everybody yeah, else. Yeah, Gay, Gay's probably just saying. Seriously, the, the way this, this maps, Embracer could cause a lot, a lot of interruption in no, I think Embracer minutes. will take a sit. Um, he has done in em- recent times. And Embracer he was our real value add for the rollover bet that you took, BJ. I did. I did. You're in second yeah. to chat. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you doing here? Chat. Chat. What are you? Hey, what that are you turns up? around to Embracer and goes, I beat you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think I actually think Lost and Running will leave um, just yeah, because... Right. He's he's never won without leading, so he draws the spot that he can lead. Um, 
I, I think that mm. he, that's his only chance of getting back into winning form. Not that I think that he can win, but I, I think that the stable will put him fair into the race. And I reckon O'Shea might be. A, don't you think O'Shea might be a bit scared of just gut busting this horse? Like it hasn't led a field like this up before, so. No, um, I, I think that he he's probably got. Oh, I don't know. He's he's got no chance of winning um, if he he's he can't come from behind him and win. So uh, I think that they have to put him in the race. And he's a gelding. He's a five year old gelding now. So it's time. Um, oh, I would love to see though Eduardo and Nature Ship jump the best, and then have Lost and Running and Home Affairs sit off them too. But who have you got on top, BJ? I'm tied to the hip with Eduardo. Um, I've had something on him at good odds. So uh, I think he will run a very good race. Like if you, if you if you put your money on him, you know what you're going to get. Classic legend for mine is the best horse in the race, but do I know what I'm going to get? I'm not sure. I don't know if yeah. he can produce what he did last year, but Eduardo, he's going to be right in the finish. First up into an Everest, there's going to be some experts out there. And then there's going to be some um, people with egg on their face. I think I'm going to be that person. I think I just because I have no idea where I'm going to go yet, and I want to put it on, like I want to have a selection for the for um, our socials. And I, I think I'm going to go classic legend, it, even if it gets to Saturday. And I still you have were him. just putting him. Two no, I wasn't ago. putting him. I'm asking the price. The price I'm not happy with. You just no, said you no. hate classic legend. I hate Zaki. Oh, that was, that that's the least. Not that I, I oh, well, like for anyone that at all, because for I anyone thought that, that thought it would be a hope first up, there's no hope now. Yep. <laughs> Do not back. No, the question was about the price because I, I, I want to back it right now. I'm going to say this is that I don't have right now. I will back classic legend, and this could be literally minutes before the race because I have no idea about this Everest. It's a yeah, like I said, I think there's probably four, five horses that could win this. Even the Inferno at twenty six dollars, it's just so unknown. Well, can you promise us before it jumps, even if it's one minute before it jumps, put it in the tips and slips what you've actually backed? Okay. Yep. I'll write that down so don't forget. <clears throat> Good chance. Right, that, forget. That's enough for me. Caulfield Cup. Let's get this. Let's do it. Let's rip into this because this is a huge, huge race. A very quick yesterday's hero. Very, very quick one for a great oh. fan of the great fan of the show and a great friend of the show. Oh, here we go. Tell us. Brent Stanley. Brent Stanley. Let's talk about Sparky. What's he's yesterday's a, hero? He's won a Caulfield Cup. I think it was back in 1993 or six. How did I not know that? when he won it. Yeah, he was an impressive 17 years old. Wow. As a young bloke, I was at uh Parramatta Pools listening to the, the race on a wireless. Oh, and, uh, yeah, back Arctic in the Sam, back in the uh, Parramatta pools, you know, you get your, your card punched on the slide and oh, listen yeah. to the races as you come down. Those are the days, but yeah, Arctic Scent Arctic is, my, Scent. Uh, is my yesterday's year. I do not know what happened to it, where it went after that, but I will never forget the Brent Stanley won the uh, the Caulfield Cup as a 17 year old apprentice. That is actually insane. I'm looking it up now. Yeah, can you imagine that being that age and winning that type of prestigious race? No, nah, not at 17. And back then, <laughs> obviously. Like, yeah, that that's actually crazy. I don't uh, I reckon when I was 17, I wouldn't have had the concentration to even watch a Caulfield Cup. Well, you're on the slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the pool. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> um, let's get into this race. Uh Caulfield Cup race nine at Caulfield. We're, we're back and forth, but it's a it's a big race day, so we want to want to do these races in in order that we want to do them. So, twenty four hundred meters, Group One, three year olds and up, five million dollar prize money, three mil for first, nine hundred for second, four hundred fifty thousand for third. Incentivized from Barrier Twenty at two dollars forty. Our current favourite, Delphi. Short backup, seven dollars. Young w- Squirter, eleven dollars. Non conformist, twelve dollars. The chosen one, thirteen bucks. Explosive Jack, Montefilia, Juaeus, all at seventeens. Hassan, she's ideal, mid thirties. 
Master of Wine, Holmesman, Chapada. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, a lot of horses in this race. The That's enough, isn't it? Phenomenal race, this one. Big, 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 big race. So let's go through them quickly. I'm going to go through them in order of how the odds are stacking up right now. Incentivize, can it overcome barrier 20 and win this race? BJ. Yes, no doubt he can. He's On a, top for you? No. Uh, oh. He's a superstar. Oh. When you got it at 50, you don't have to have it on top. No, I'm only doing the Melbourne Cup. I'm, I, I've checked my bet slips. I can't find one for the Crawford Cup. So It'll be in there. I, you should screenshot those because they'll – boogies, you just make them disappear. Uh, I think he can win, no doubt. He's just going to have to do a – He's going to have to do plenty of work. It's a 20. lot of work from 20, isn't it? Um, he's got to go forward. He can't go back and get cover. Uh, he's going to be hard to beat. I just think he's going to drift in the market at this stage. I can't have him that short um, from that gate. He would actually have to be Might and Power. Well, I, he, he's a very good horse. I will say that. But to do this, he would actually have to be might and power to do this. From barrier 20, fuck me dead. You're going to have to light it up to get to the front if he wants to lead. Yep, he will. But I I have no doubt he's a very good horse, uh, but he will have to be all that to win. All that and a bag of chips. from Elfie, which was the... uh, It was the back end of a, a nice double that got me over the line on the weekend... Uh, last weekend at Caulfield in the Herbert Power Stake, short backup, seven dollars for Delphi. Pat, yes or no? He's a nice horse and uh, has beaten the chase one a couple of times. Who has good form around good horses, but I'm happy to leave Delphi out. Now, young Squirter, we spoke about it last week. Came up and uh, it really gave incentivize a run for its money. Uh, currently, eleven dollars in the market. Are we giving this a thought? Any one of you guys can jump that, into this. That one. one can go to Pat. I'm saying it's had its birthday. Yeah. Happy hope. birthday. Happy Back birthday, to young Worth. Back See to you bed. Later. Uh, where do we go next? I, I actually have a question about Joias, who won today um, the Coonji Cup. I don't think it, it was already, I think it already qualified for the Caulfield Cup. Uh, end up coming out, floating artists jumped it like. Silly, silly odds. Dollar fifty-five. Um, Juice came out. It was really impressive. It was a very, very tough run. Can it do the what is it? Thursday, Friday, basically a Three days, 70, yeah. 72 hour backup and compete in this field, Juice. Let me give you a bit of a run around here. This okay. is give me a run how around. many horses outside of the horses that win the uh the Saab or the Lexus on um the Saturday before the Melbourne Cup, go on to win two races in four days. Not many try, though. And so, it's, this is different to the Melbourne Cup. Well, it's very it's very similar to the Caulfield Cup. Tough staying test. You've got to be a super tough horse to... Uh, I mean, this race specifically, like we just don't have the international then, horses or anything like that. But as well as that, who is this horse trained by? Ed. Edward Cummings. Ed Cump. Yeah, Ed Cump. So if anyone can do it, it is the the what the grandchild of they are uh, of the greatest staying trainer in Australia of all time. But do you think Chewis can do it? Geez, I'd like to say no, but its improvement from that first start to today to what it could do on a Saturday in a staying test, it's uh yeah, I, I'm sort of I'm inclined not to leave it out. If you're having trifectas. I, I think it's definitely worth having in your numbers. Mick D come off it today and just said it wouldn't blow a candle out. Like it's fit as. Mick D come? No, no, that's Ed come. Mick, Michael D, the Mick, jockey. Oh, Mick D. Mickey D. Yeah, Mickey I, D. I give her a chance. I She could produce a, a peak figure off that. Um I know Huey has big wraps on her. Um, yeah. He was disappointed in her effort in the hill stakes, but they were home in uh, sub-34 splits and stays just can't do that. So uh, yeah. she was looking for, she's looking for 2,400 metres. She was good winning today. So 
yeah, I, I think she could win. Big jump. Oh, I got okay. myself today for saving my money and not betting today and uh, not touching the twelve dollars about it. Absolutely yeah. filthy. Oh, you would have backed it. Oh, yeah. I rode into another group. Are we on Jewish today? And then they said yes, and I said oh, I'm not going to deposit today. Yuck. I know, pussy. idiot. That's pussy. Idiot. That's, That's the pussy softest stuff. thing we've heard on this show tonight. Um, <laughs> okay, who else are we looking at? Give me, give me, give me your selections. Well, non-conformist, we have to look at him. Do well, we? we have to talk about non-conformist. Do we have to? Yeah. Well, he's. Um, we don't have. To. We don't have to. He's. He's very hard to beat. It's hard to. It's hard Wait to get to form out of that last race. Um, he's had. He's. For fifth up into a, a Caulfield Cup, he, he's going to be hard to beat. He's he's well placed. He, he drops what seven and a half kilos. Um, Sixteen. He's got the man Williams on board. He's going to be right in it. Are we right, worried about it at the distance? Not for mine. Forms only in a Mornington Cup behind Irish Flame. No, sorry, Mount Popper. Not for mine. He's only had eighteen race starts. He's by Rebel Raider. Rebel Raider was a Derby yeah. winner. Fair, 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 fair. I, I personally, I actually, I'm with Delphi. I, I think Delphi's the one to beat. Wow. Um, well, Delphi's. I think Delphi's over the odds personally. Um, I know him and Nonconformist are on the seven days. I think that's perfect. <laughs> I think Delphi's. Um, he was back like a good horse. Um, in that Herbert Power, I think uh, there was black odds on offer, but he was crunched and started odds on. Uh, he had to make a a long sustained run. Uh, yeah, fourth up. Waiting for something to run him down. No wait. Yeah, he hit the front a long way from home, and he was he was too good. I I think uh, he's drawn awkward as well. But Oliver can go back and find cover, and he's gonna he's gonna be hard to beat. Paddy, who you like him for the Caulfield Cup? Montefilia for me, mate. I think uh, 24 to 24. I know there's probably not a big rap on the Metrop form. All the form students would uh, probably say that the Metrop form is probably a bit weak, but I have got, I think Montefilia could be an out of the box stayer and one of Australia's best stayers eventually. So I think it's a horse with a lot of potential. It um, It's win last start was good. It wasn't outstanding. It will definitely have to improve off that run. So I I just, yeah, I don't know that there's any superstars in this race. And I think that's probably evident by Blake tipping Delphi on top. Yeah, like, what about the thing on top? Going for 10 in a row. Incentivize now, jumps from barrier 20. I'm happy to leave it out. If it jumps from barrier 20, lights it up, then I'm... I'm yeah, I think you're... setting it it's setting it up for horses to run it down. So I'm putting Monophilia on top, and I'm also having something on She's Ideal. I've I actually think... had something on She's Ideal as well. She's so have I. Yeah. I. In fact, hold on. If they, Blake, horse... you might have actually tipped it to members. Yeah, I think I did. I think you tipped it to members for this race at big, big odds, fifty to one or something. Yeah, I think she's still similar odds actually, but I think no, she's, no, gonna she's run in a race. Bit of... No, one? she's she's. No, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I agree. I agree. She could Craig, actually come out and absolutely nut it. Craig Newell, please, please, Lord, please do not let Craig Newell just drop it out the back. This horse has to posse up. It has to be up there. I think it's more versatile than they give it credit for. And I don't think it would be the right option for it to go back and sit either last, second, last, third, last on the fence. I think from barrier five, would love to see it positive out of the barrier and you know, sort of up there in the top half of the field. Uh, I know we've 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 moved around incentivized, but Young Werther, which like, did we just mention it? There was a reason why we're staying away from it completely. You don't think it can do the jump from 2,000 to 2,400 meters? Um, you know, around within what the length of incentivize. Incentivize is a short price fade, but coming from 20, Young Werther's coming from barrier eight. Not a good bet. Good bet. I, I like Young Werther. I like Young Swerther. Oh, he's got a hope. No doubt. Jeez, you'd have For to mine, throw an explosive jack in if you're, uh, if you're a young Squirter fan. Yeah, but I'm just going off latest form. Explosive Jack hasn't done a whole heap in the last well, he's only what, had two six months. Preparation. 
I don't know. I sort of look at that last this race. last six is. months, he's probably won two derbies. But he's gone five lengths. No, he hasn't. But he's gone five lengths off incentivise, uh, four lengths of incentivise, uh, and that was over 1,600 metres, 2,000 metres. Young Werther's done less. I'm saying it was there to be run down incentivise and it didn't get to it. So I think if you're gonna if you're thinking of something to do with your money, you'd back incentivise over young Werther. Okay, so if you're thinking about backing young Werther, do you fold back to Miller this year and look at um, explosive Jack's run in the Queensland derby? Have a look at its run in there. <laughs> Mate, the, the explosive Jack prep is so like. I don't, I don't know, Blakey. Talk to me. Talk me through the explosive black jack prep into this Caulfield Cup. It's got sixteen hundred two thousand metres. He's a stayer. Mm. He's this is. He wouldn't have been ready for a Maccabi DV. He would have had no hope in a Turnbull. But he's got a, a good hope in a, a Caulfield Cup. He this is his race. He's going to peak on the day, and they've got eyes for a Melbourne Cup. So, and that's a, a huge yeah. chance. And I think Young Worth is a chance too, but. Um, we can't tip a ball, Sam. I'd love to. Yeah, would it? I, yeah, I think, but that's what I'm saying. If you're having young Werther, I think you probably include Explosive Jack too because its prep has just been like build, build, build. Like you said, Blake, it'll probably be one of those horses that, you know, comes into even money figures for the Melbourne Cup off the back of a massive Caulfield Cup run. Yeah, well, I think this is, him. he's going to run, he's going to run a big race. He's a, he's a, Oh. He's a legitimately good stayer of the future. For me, it's barred. Yeah, because you lost the rollover. It knocked me out of the rollover bit. So obviously, yeah, loser. Yeah, obviously, it's coming from a super dark uh, place for me to be talking nice about this horse. I'm tipping explosive, Jack. What a great horse. Oh, yeah, you're a fucking egg. Yeah, I've, got, I've got no idea. I have no idea in this race. It's like I said, I haven't had enough time this afternoon to go, go through them in depth. I like the Delphi bet, BJ. Pat, on your uh, Montefilia column, are you in front? Yes. I feel like you've tipped this horse quite a bit. I launched into it last start. Oh, okay. It was just based on the bet. Oh, yeah, mate. I'm going to be in front off this horse. I love the horse. It has had 15 starts of five wins. So its ROI is 411%. So it's a winner of a horse, but... It just is, uh, I don't know. I, I I initially said that it was poorly placed, but it, um, yeah, I think it's better out to this distance. I want to see it get to a Melbourne Cup, this horse. So I'd love to see it running a super good Caulfield Cup and it drops in weight coming into the cup, into the Caulfield Cup down to down three and a half kilos or something like that to, uh, from the Metrop. So I know the, you can say that the Metro not good form coming out of it, but it's just well, I wouldn't one say good that. one. I thought, yeah, I you thought said it that. was a good Metro this year. So, yeah. Um, well, okay. So, Patty, you're going to go Montefiore at 17. BG going Delphi. I, I like Delphi on top, so I might go something a little bit different. So that we're showing a bit different. I, maybe explosive Jack. What's the price of explosive Jack? Mate, for the odds, I'm throwing in. Um, she's ideal. Well, I've got. You know what? We've all got she's ideal as a roughie, so I'll just put that as the as the post as well that we've all gone she's ideal as the roughie. But yeah, I I I think the winner comes from any of those, and I think we've found good odds about all of them. But shock me though, find me a, a wide open Caulfield Cup. They're always just wide open, aren't they? It's anything, crazy, isn't it? Anything can happen in a Caulfield Cup. Okay, let's. Uh, Oh, we've been going for hours. So let's let's burst through a couple of these races. Uh, feel free to just throw a, a name at me. Um, does anyone want to take the Sydney Stakes? Yeah, mate. Got a um, bit of MN mail for Big Parade. Great to see it last start, being a bit versatile, being ridden off the speed after having a bad jump by Josh Parr. Big Parade on top. I was surprised to see it at such short odds at $4, but I'll be backing it. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll well, give I'll give two tips in Sydney. Yeah, give it. I'm give having two. Give. I've had two bets um, in Sydney. Uh, we'll skip over to the St Ledger. It's the ninth race. I've had yep. something on 
Karif, I think he's uh, going to peak third up. He's been looking for this trip. He comes out of that hill stakes where he just got out sprinting. I know he ran last, but his sectionals were okay. They were very similar to Jewis, um, who's come out and won that Kungi. They just, they just, they walked and then they sprinted home and he was just left behind. So he's going to relish getting down to this trip. Uh, I think he peaks now. I have, I had a problem when I first looked at the race with him on wet tracks, but going back through it, um, he's run some really good races on wet surfaces. So I have no problem with him in the wet. Uh, I think he's over the odds and I think he runs a huge race. Uh, the other one that I've had something on in Sydney is in the, uh, bargain what race is she in two or three she's in yeah she's in the craven plate um so right down the bottom she's on the seven day backup i thought she was very good in that ang stakes uh she didn't have much luck she she did she really wanted to run on um but she just didn't get clear galloping room i think up to 12 up to 2000 meters third up on the seven day backup she's going to run a huge race and she loves wet tracks so i think she's over the odds what race is she in? Eight. I think I said two. I <laughs> say, yeah, down the bottom. Oh, there you go. Oh, you can get 30s about it too. Good. Oh, All right, yeah. rollover bet. Let me hit you with my rollover bet. All right, here we go. I'm going to death ride it. I feel like we need to lose a few just to kind of dilute the Zaki bet. What was that? Just to dilute the Zaki bet. I just said that. Why is that? Why do we have to dilute the Zaki bet? This is a big loss for us. I'm going to take like Sunrise. Should, I feel like we should all lose. No, let's get let's get back on track. Yeah, let's get back in the winner's circle. Sunrise Ruby, a place in the Kosciuszko Okay. 480. All right. Oh, it's a good, it'll be a very good start for us. So let's see, we've got to get off to a good start. Well, like we said, embrace uh, the place was the the big start for us. I think it was like embrace second or third. Up. Embrace of the place was like second or third. Have you got a place price there? What, where, where are we having this bet? Oh, I thought Blakey would have it on his phone. I thought this would be a work expense. It is. I'll, I'll be putting it on. <laughs> well, can um, we get a price at least? Four eighty. Let's what go. I'm with, let's go with five. <clears throat> let's just say five right now. We'll, we'll put, put the bet set up in multiplier up. So. Um, so yeah. Nice. Oh, I, I love it. Me too. I can see Sunrise Ruby Barrier Four just bursting through up the inside, or just oh, coming off the back of him. Glenn Boss excited, getting that Group One, Group One luck that he seems to get. Yeah. So we'll, I reckon we'll get about four eighty the place at least, minimum four eighty. Group One luck in the Kosciuszko. That's what we need. I guess it's not a great one, but it's still, it's a... Uh, <laughs> still, you, you want that kind of luck. That's the luck on it. That's the luck we want. Hey, um, this is the last chance for you to get your reviews in and get on board to get some of this Kosciuszko cooler bags. I don't have one here in the office. I had one. Uh, we'll get some Kosciuszko cooler bags. Uh, 150 lashes. No, James Squire stubby coolers. The leg up stubby coolers. Uh, we have to give a few away. So make sure these guys, uh, we got, I think the boys got in touch with us from last week's reviews. Your cooler bags will go out, your, your packs will go out tomorrow or Friday. Uh, let me just hit you with a few uh, reviews before we finish. Is there anything else we need to? Nope. No, nah, okay. Um, D Forbes, D Faves. Ripper Potty, five stars. Been an active listener for over a year now, and I couldn't tell you what else I'd rather listen to on a Friday Arvo at work to get me keen for a weekend racing. Keep it up, lads. Dylan, Dylan, make sure you're right in. Qu- dill pickle. Quality potty with <laughs> the dill pickle. Dylan, 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 Dylan. Luke DF12, favorite racing podcast, good banter, and legend blogs. One of the things I look forward to most each week is listening to this show. I learn, learn more about racing. It's obviously from YouTube and the industry. Every episode, the leg up community is awesome. That is completely correct. Love your work legends. Keep it up. Quick shout out to BJ, the way in with Marlo. I love that show. It's awesome. That's it is a great this show. Is we got one listener. That's good. You've written this. You've written this bloody thing, haven't you? 
It's from Luke. It De- Hold on, it's from Luke Deer. It's Marlo. Is it? No, who is it? Luke Deer with Marlo. No, that can't be. You wouldn't know how to use this. Luke DF12. Um, so Luke DF or Marlo, whoever it is, let us know. Send us in your address to say. That's that my Marla. review, guys. Shem, Shem, Shem. Great punning, Potty. This is Tofty91. A must listen to take back from the bookies. The boys are on fire and seem to get better as we move into the best time of the year. Yeah, boys are doing well. Uh, Shano6196. I love this podcast. Great tips, Banner and Bevies. If you listen to these boys, they'll keep your accounts looking healthy, especially Blake and Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, <laughs> they're on fire lately or we'll make you have a good laugh and we'll make you have a good laugh what about i'd make people have laughs <laughs> oh, in when these legends listen up lads and this of the of the, the the five that we chose this has to be my favorite this is from Hazza 128 best podcast going around five stars uh trying to get one of them coolers to be honest but also a great podcast <laughs> <laughs> short and sweet i love it <laughs> I like it. So Woody, a, boys, Woody, right not, tip, not tip winners are not funny. Not funny, not <laughs> blues are not funny. So I'll, I'll get better. I'll get better. This is this podcast next year is going to go into new heights. We're gonna have more time to give you more things, more shows, etc. 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 But for now, it's late at night, boys. I appreciate you staying up. Uh and I appreciate your insight, as do all our listeners. Good luck this weekend champions enjoy what is one of the best days of racing thank you pat thank you bj see you at the everest oh yeah hold on wait quickly you're there pat so just before we finish i I know that so where can the listeners find you they'll find me don't worry i'll be there i'll be a beacon of light i heard they can't because you're up in the swanky box you dog (laughs) one of the people if you're looking for me look up I'm just You're meant below. To be a man of the people. I'm just below heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good luck. Good luck, Paddy. Thanks, boys.